Welcome everybody back to the Fire Talk podcast and YouTube channel. So for today's episode, we are going to be going over a few uh, roster moves that the Padres had. Now they have selected the contracts of Mackenzie Gore, uh, Yugi Rosario, and Efran Contreras. Oh, and also Steven Wilson. So those guys are being added to the 40-man roster, and the purpose of that is to protect them from the Rule 5 draft. Um, also, Jorge Onya, Reggie Lawson are being sent down to Triple A. That does not mean that they're eligible for the Rule 5 draft, but basically they were hurt, and so they're not on like the major league roster. They just got moved to to Triple A coming off of that injured list. Um, now, Chase, there was a couple other moves that were made, but first, before you get into that, and then you can kind of discuss those other ones, could you just tell me like how clear it was for these four guys that got moved onto the 40 man roster? Like, do you think it's a no brainer for all these guys to be, um, you know, not in that rule five draft, uh, draft pool? Yeah. We all can see Gore. We want to contribute at the MLB already. You know, that one's pretty easy. Steven Wilson, we have been advocating for him, you know, to be called up for a reliever for a while. I really like Efrain Contreras. He was hurt for a while last year, and then, you know, he kind of had a down year from that. But we, I like his stuff a lot. I, I think the team does too. You know, they really protected him. And then, uh, you know, I, those guys are just practically, you know, in guys that they really want them to be a con- make a contribution to the team. The Rosario, um, it's kind of tough with him. He's kind of roadblocked from what we've seen. So he might be used as trade bait and, you know, keeping him around is kind of probably more beneficial than not just kind of letting him get swooped away in a rule five. Uh, one of the other moves just kind of to, cause there's three people off the roster to make room for those four. It was uh, Sean Anderson was claimed off waivers to Toronto. So there's that uh, going off of that. There are three guys that are eligible for the rule five draft that did not get selected to the 40 man roster. The one that I'm probably like probably most shook about because he probably is going to go is Brandon Valenzuela, the lefty, the left, the lefty hitting catcher. Uh, he had a really good year. He's only 19 years old. You know, that, that's prime rule five draft. He'll probably make it back to the Padres because the whole thing with the rule five draft is you have to keep them on the major league roster for the entire year, which unless you're like the pirates, it's really hard to do because you have more talented players that are there and just kind of putting a rookie there. That's not ready. Isn't always the prettiest thing to do. We saw that with Alan Cordoba and uh, Luis Perdomo when, because there were rule five guys that actually stuck around for the entire year when the Padres were just that bad. Um, the other guy is Augustine Ruiz. He's an infielder. He's 27 years old. It makes sense that he's kind of left out. And the other one is Tirso Ronales. You know, he was at one point, I believe, a top 10 prospect in the system. He just has not lived up to his potential. He's 28 years old. You know, all right, if he goes, it's probably better for him to see something new. Maybe, you know, make a career somewhere else. Uh, he's kind of blocked on the Padres. There's better talent than him in the system. So not too upset about it. Yeah, these four guys that the Padres selected, it's kind of like a shoe in fit for all of them. You can make an argument that all of them need to be on the roster. I don't think there's one where you can be like, yeah, you know what, we can get rid of them. I don't think it, that's the case for these four guys. Yeah, I think I think I feel the same way, though it is a little weird that, you know, um, now I'm, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Valenzuela, uh, that Valenzuela was left off just because this catcher's market, the free agency market, is not good um, for catcher. Like, And if you guys listened to Ryan's episode when he was talking about it, um, cause I've talked to him a lot about it. He thinks that, that Victor Caratini, ugh, Victor Caratini can be traded because the market is so bad that teams will look at them and go, that's a pretty substantial upgrade over what we currently have in the system. Um, and that's pretty crazy considering that for him, we're de- like, in terms of the Padres, they're deciding, do we want to keep Victor Caratini or do we want Campusano to have an expanded role where we're moving on from Victor? Um, so when you're looking at, the free agency market, there might be a team, like you said, the Pirates or a team that's not even close to contending that would go get Valenzuela in that Rule 5 draft. So I wonder if that's going to happen. That's probably the most concerning thing for me. 
I don't know. I feel like there's a chance that I might rather have kept him and left Contreras or Stephen Wilson off, off. Now, the only thing is, are those guys going to play a role next year? If they are, then of course it's a no brainer. If they're like going to be in, in the bullpen or competing for the fifth spot, like we've kind of talked about before. Um, if they're going to be impact players next year, sure. But else I would have rather kept Valenzuela, I think over them, um, Mackenzie Gore, that's obvious, very, very obvious that you're not going to let him go to the rule five. He would get taken probably first overall if that was the case. Um, but I was a little bit surprised about Valenzuela just because, I mean, we've talked about him. We've, we've included him in trade packages. We've included Campusano and then talked about him as another guy in the minor league system that could be the future catcher if you're really high on Nolan Victor Caratini. Um, so I would just be, I, I just find it kind of surprising where right now I feel like maybe not right now, but in baseball, like having a good catcher, if you can land a prospect that's a, a good catcher and then have him become your future catcher, that's so valuable. Like that's one of those positions where it just gets a little bit overvalued and people will maybe uh, like spend more there or trade more capital than, than you need to, which, I mean, look at, look at the NOLA trade. That might've been the case there where it was a lot. And because catcher is such an important position at the time, the Padres had Mejia and Austin Hedges and they were like, okay, we cannot compete with Mejia and Austin Hedges back here. We have to go make a move. Um, and then they sort of overpaid for Nola. Um, so I just find it interesting that they would leave him off. But I don't know. A anything else you want to add on, on these moves? Yeah, like you were saying, uh, Contreras is probably not going to be that impact guy, you know, that guy fighting for the fifth spot. I still think he's a couple a uh, couple years away from being an MLB pitcher. But I think that just speaks to the talent that he has and how much belief that the Padres organization does in him. They have a really good eye for talent, so I think they see something in this kid. So I'm kind of glad they did that. Uh, the only argument I would make is probably Rosario. I like Stephen Wilson. He had a really good year in AAA and AA. He's right there just on the doors waiting to get called up to be an impact reliever at the MLB level. But Rosario, he, he seems like he's ready. It's just he doesn't have a spot to play. Sure, you don't want him to be just gone in the Rule 5 draft and you want to trade something for him. But, you know, it's probably one of those things where you're sacrificing a 19-year-old lefty hitting catcher that got really a lot of hype around him this season. Or, you know, trade value. Which one do you value more? And it looks like they value the trade value more this time around. It is, it is interesting, and we've talked about trading him for – or him being the main piece in a trade for Josh Bell. Um, so I do definitely think that there's a, ch a very good chance that Rosario is traded, but young catching prospects I feel like are more valuable. I think that's a – I don't know. I would rather have the organization go that way. Um, in terms of the pitchers, though, Contreras, Stephen Wilson, I think Stephen Wilson could definitely be a have a, a pretty decent role in the bullpen this year. Uh, you look at some of the guys that potentially might not be around – um, some of the guys that had okay years last year or started off hot and then kind of fell off. Um, I think Pagan's definitely the one that most Padre fans are, are most frustrated about, but I do think that he could be a guy that is starting opening day or not, sorry, not starting, but is on the opening day roster. Um, so going to be interesting. Hopefully, hopefully uh, Contreras and these guys do pan out and hopefully it all works out. But also, Hopefully Valenzuela is not taken in the rule five draft. That just, that fixes most of the problems there. Um, he is very young. Like you said, Chase, it was 19, I believe. Um, so that is extremely young to have a guy come in, you know, be, be your catcher at the, the MLB level. So I wonder if maybe nobody takes him, but if you do, it might be one of those situations where he might struggle a lot, but in four or five years, it looks like such a great move from an organization that went and got him, but we'll see. Um, Anything else you want to add before we take off, though? All right, awesome. Well, thank you all for listening. We are going to be having a live stream on Sunday morning, 9 a.m., me, Chase, and Isaac, and we'll just go over whatever you guys want to talk about. So make sure to hop on before football starts that morning. Um, but that's going to do it for us today. Thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you very soon.